Hello, Simon. Hello, Alex. How are you? Very well. Good. Let's go for a little explore. Ourselves falling through with the rafters, which was probably been installed ever since the beginning of the building. And here's some of the items that we discovered lying around here. There's a broken bottle that says the House of Commons, old Scottish whiskey, I think it is. And uh, there's a piece of newspaper from I think it's quite old. I've got. left or cut out and this gives you access to the next floor up. This clock um, sits in this wooden case and uh, I've told you my left here, this is the weight that drives it. This weight is about six feet from the bottom at the moment. It goes up and we can wind it right up to the top, which we'll do in a minute. So squeeze past here. And we now arrive on the access door to the clock. And open this up. And there's the clock. Uh, this has got a thing called a bolt and shutter on it. When you, once you start to wind it, what happens is that you take the power off the train so the clock stops. So to stop that happening, you've got this device here, which has got a weight on the end of it. So you take the handle, engage the handle onto the shaft there, push that home like that. Then you push this bolt and shutter forward and it engages with the gear that you can see there. Uh, and now the clock is being powered by the weight on the end of the shaft and you're now able to start winding it. I was here a week ago when I last wound it, so it's had a, a week's worth of going.
got a mark on the end of the cable so I know where it is. So that's a clock fully wound. Now I've got to disconnect this device. I first off take the handle out, pull, you can pull the bolt forward, take the handle out, and now the, the clock is being driven by the weight again. Next thing to do is to adjust the time. Um, since I was here last week, it looks like it's lost a couple of minutes, so I'm going to put that right. That's the key to change the time. It's 10 12 now, so I'm going to go forward about a minute. And um, the, the clock has um, doesn't didn't have a seconds dial. I've made a small modification to it. It's a removal modification, but it enables me to just swivel this round and wait till the time is right, which is going to be about there. And then I can set the time going again and uh, monitor it um, when I'm back next week. No electronics or electric involved. Perhaps we can have a look at the uh, pendulum. Yeah, we can do. We can um, we take the panels off the back. We can open it up and have a quick look. Just need to go around and catch it, otherwise it'll. Yeah. Mm. You, you got that? Yeah, if you push it. There we go. There it goes. Bring the light with you. I'll bring the light. There we go. Thanks. And here you can see the pendulum. We can slide that out. It's really quite a massive weight for a pendulum. It's quite a lumpy piece, having, having had to move it from time to time. And uh, there it is. This is the, uh, the back of the clock here, this is the pendulum, it's a metre pendulum, it gives uh, beats a second. And um, when I found it here, it's going a, a little bit slow, I'm just going to raise the pendulum um, a very small amount. There's a big nut on the bottom of the pendulum, and I'll stop the pendulum for a moment and just turn the nut. I'm going to give it about a tenth of a turn, that'll be enough, and then I'm going to start it up again. We're away again. And so what has been done to restore it is that the clock was removed back to my workshop. I took it all apart. And um, Jill and Johnson were great fond of these sort of colours of using this, this gold here on here. And I didn't want to fiddle with it, so all I've done is to clean it. I've not repainted it or tried touching it up or anything like that. All I've done is clean it. And uh, it benefits, um, like most mechanisms will do, being in a case because um, it's, it, was fit. It, wasn't too, it wasn't mucky in here, it wasn't too bad. And we cleaned it out, vacuumed it up, and um, brought it back here and set it going again. And I'm um, very, very pleased to see that it's going very well.
as a lot of wood, this is metal. And then poke through this hole and you're up into the very top of the clock. And I don't know whether Alex has got his camera on this mechanism here, but uh, this is the piece that distributes the time to all the four faces. So this is the rod that's turning by the clock down there. That wheel there turns around and it takes the time to all four faces. And we had a little bit of issue with this when we were working with it. We found some of the faces were sticking a bit, uh, but we think we've got it to the point now where it's fairly happy. One of the uh, most interesting things are the signatures that are on the side of the walls, right? Um, when we arrived here, we found that uh, the people in the past who have uh, been clock minders and winders um, would leave their signatures behind. We've got one here, it looks like A.J. MacLeith, September the 20th, 1920. And uh, above it we've got B. Hoadley, looks like papers, 19th of February, that would be 1910, and F. Holmes, 7th of uh, December 1910. And the whole building is festooned in this part with the signatures of people who have been here and done things. Here's another one, F. Might be Standen, Hastings, 19th of January 1948. Underneath that, R. E. Nicholas, May 1933 and uh, we'd be quite keen to get a little database of these names together and see if we can um, link to the people who um, know them, uh, their descendants. You can see the weight up here now where it's sitting at the top. Uh, when we got here originally we found all the pulley work was very very rusty including the weights. They, they turned a sort of deep rust colour and uh, we cleaned it all up put a new cable in and um, put it all back together. <coughs> and we've replaced one of the panes of glass as well, right? Yeah, we, one of the panes of glass was, was, was broken and we managed to replace that. Um, we would love to have had access to the outside. It's very difficult working inside here, but uh, as you can see, it's not, it's not very wide. You can get, if you can get two people up here, you're doing quite well. And after that, it's... Uh, not much hope. Uh, much of the credit for this little uh, job is due to this guy here, um, a chap called Chris Dumpman, uh, Dumpman Films, Chris Bedford is his name, and uh, he uh, has a passion for old things, old railways, and he did a set of videos, you can go to his website at uh, dumpman.co.uk, and um, he came here and he took some stills uh, where we are standing now, and um, it was through um, me coming across these stills that I realised that the clock was still here. I thought it had sort of probably all that remained was just the, the face outside and everything else had gone. But uh, it's that that inspired me to start making inquiries as to whether it could be restored. And I'm pleased to say the answer was yes and we did. I think that's brilliant, Simon. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're very much welcome. Simon Allen from Bexhill Heritage. Um, you might try getting a shot looking through the little hatch down there, looking up the clock from here. You want to try that? Yeah, let's go down again. Let's, let's